uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to make a brief comment on how the local government development program in Uganda used aid to address some of the governance constraints in the public service delivery, of course, based on the on how the study categorized the, the constraints. Uh, but perhaps before I go in, into the details, uh, as I mentioned in the presentation, uh, the local government development program was designed to improve the financing and the capacity of local government to deliver local infrastructure. Now, I personally participated uh, from the initial design in the late 1990s, and I've also been actively involved uh, in the successor program in different capacities, uh, providing TA to both local government and the ministry, and also doing uh, uh, analysis, technical analysis and reviews uh, on a number of aspects of the project. But also, uh, my comment uh, today, I also informed by the kind of work which I'm doing with the budget, budget threatening initiative in South Sudan regarding uh, supporting government to develop and implement systems for local service delivery uh, using both aid and government resources. Now, uh, in Uganda, there are a number of constraints, governance constraints, which happened or existed before the local government development program was designed. Now, regarding the issue of policy and institutional coherence, I know how you speak. The policy and legal framework clearly uh, elaborated. It clearly defined the mandates and the roles of the different levels of local government, not only for infrastructure provision, but also for service delivery in, in, in total or, or in broad terms. Uh, however, there were no government systems, no resources to support the local government to implement their mandate. So basically the constraints were not about lack of policy, but rather lack of resources for the local government to implement their mandate. Now by that time, uh, most of, of such delivery was being done uh, through NGOs, and in a few cases uh, by by local agencies using their area-based program. So there was a lot of uh, constraints around policy and institutional coherence regarding resources and systems to have them to have the policies which were in place in place. Now regarding top-down government discipline and the bottom-up accountability relationship, uh, the law again was very clear in terms of the mandate of the central government ministry regarding setting standards, regarding supporting and inspecting local government. But again, all this was not happening because, again, the national level lacked the system and the resources and also the staff to do all this. But also regarding the bottom-up accountability, this was basically non-existent because, uh, again, there were no resources which were being transferred to, to local government. Now, similarly, there were a number of constraints around uh, problem solving and local, local collective action. Now, as perhaps some of you know, uh, in Uganda we had local councils which were formed from the village up to the local government level. The idea there would be an avenue for promoting local collective action. But by that time, these ones were mainly preoccupied with administering local justice. And in the cases where we had uh, participatory planning processes to identify community infrastructure and suffering, these were basically supported by NGOs and by other agencies, and, and in many cases were not harmonized and often bypassed government structures. Now, basically, what did the program do to address the constraints using aid? Now, the first major issue here is that the government, the program, uh, developed and tested an incentive-based grant allocation system, which had three mutual reinforcing features. Uh, on one hand, it had a distributional development grant, which was being transferred to local government. 
Uh, but before this grant was being transferred, local governments had to meet uh, a number of governance uh, criteria, but also local governments could, could be rewarded for performing well. And uh, in addition to that, there was another feature about capacity building, because in the cases where local governments could not meet uh, the performance criteria, they were being uh, provided with resources and funds to address the performance gaps which were being identified. Now, this system uh, informed the intergovernmental fiscal architecture of Uganda, especially for delivering uh, local infrastructure. And uh, in addition to that, also supported the government to develop systems for planning, for budgeting, for procurement, for financial management, uh, for reporting, uh, and so on. And I think to me what was also very important is that government itself up to now uses the modality which were developed under Aero GDP development funds uh, which are being transferred to government. And again in terms of enhancing the top down performance discipline, uh, this grant uh, helped central government to establish and enhance oversight and support mechanisms. Uh, central government started to carry out inspections, performance assessments, and also provided uh, supply uh, driven capacity building, you know, in cases where governments could not handle this on their own. And, and again, because of this system, the local governments also started to comply to the reporting obligations, which enhanced. Uh, bottom up accountability relationships. Now, for local collective action, again, the grant, which was discretionary, incentivized stakeholders to participate in planning and allocation of resources uh, to produce shared public services. And at the same time, this project helped to develop the harmonized participatory planning guide, uh, which was rolled out. National, uh, nationally and providing a, a framework for uh, planning and uh, uh, problem solving and local collective action. Now perhaps the main question is uh, what were the enabling factors for all this to happen? Now, the, the first one uh, was that the, the program started and supported the implementation of government pronouncements uh, on devolution of powers functions and resources to local governments as was demonstrated in the and, and policies. And the nature of the, of the program being a discretionary development grant uh, helped to government to deliver local infrastructure which was, largely, uh, which was largely missing, making the program very popular at the community, at the local government level and the national level. Actually, when it came to approving credit was a special program, it became very smooth because everybody was convinced that the program is delivering the goods. And moreover, it was also building on the existing uh, Lego mandate. You know, most of the design features of the program were based on existing practices and local government data. Now, for example, uh, the mandate of the different post lines to the mandate as articulated in Schedule 2. So basically there was a lot of uh, enabling factors. Emmanuel, could I just jump However, in and say we're just, I want to leave plenty of space for questions. So um, if you could just sort of bring it to a conclusion. Sorry to interrupt. Yes, I'm, I'm now, uh, let me conclude. Uh, one thing which perhaps I need to mention as I conclude is about uh, these enabling factors. Uh, most longer uh, uh, because, you know, first of all, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, one of the key features of the program was this sort of mutual reinforcing relationship between development grant, capacity building grant, and the incentive scheme. Now, that one, uh, the design is still relevant. However, in the last few years, five years or so, uh, the, the objectivity and the credibility of this system has been questioned, and also, the way that the words and such like uh, so to many people is not being adhered to. 
Hello. I think. Hello. Yes, I think the audio's it, it's becoming a little bit sketchy. So um, if you could just sort of bring to a conclusion, then I think we we might try and recover it in time for to answer some questions. Oh, okay. But basically, the conclusion is that well, things can work very well when there is an enabling environment. All this has to be sustained by political commitment. And as as again was born in the study, because now that uh, government political commitment to devolution is changing. Most of the enabling factors are no longer holding, and the effectiveness of aid to address this government's constraints is also uh, uh, getting a lot of challenges of recent. I uh, thank you very much for now. Thank you very much, and appreciate you persevering over a over a phone line, which isn't so easy. Um, we'll, I'm sure there'll be questions, and we'll come back to that.